Did you miss me? Two daughters presented by EA Create Network. Thank you, EA, for providing me a copy of the factory review. Legally, in the UK, we have to state that this is an ad, but I've not received any money for this review. I've just been provided a copy of the factory review. I'm free to say my own opinions, and once again, I'm not being paid. Legally, we just have to say that it's an ad. Didn't think that we'd be here, and yet here we are. Look at us. Who'd have thought? Not me. So honestly, they had me with Paranormal, they got me Hook, Line and Sinker, and now they just left me put the back. And today's a review of the first stuff pack since Paranormal stuff. Last time I felt happy. I did dress up as Bonehilda for that review. I'm not gonna go for the full shebang. I'm already serving in this outfit, babe. <laughs> so let's just jump right in. Starting off in Create Sim, which is the weakest part of the pack for me. That's not necessarily to say it's bad, but it is the weakest part of the pack. There's a few cute new outfits for males and females, to be fair. They both share the same accessories. Very themed to the pack, obviously. So I don't think that you will get every single day use out of this. But I do think they could be good for storytelling purposes. And I also really like the different pizza swatches and the earrings. I thought that was a nice detail. Originally, in my trailer review, I said that I can see some of these pieces being a bit hit or miss for me. And I was 100% right in that guess because they are. Like, some of the tops, I'm like, I will never have that swatch in my life. But... Also, for some of them, I was like, you know what? As a casual piece, I actually think I would get my use out of this a lot. I also feel like t-shirts are just something that we've been generally lacking in this game for some reason. And we have some more cuffed trousers as well. Something about the Sims team, love a cuffed pair of trousers, babe. Love a cuffed pair of trousers. If it ain't gonna catch your shit, they want nothing to do with it, you know? And while for some of the chef swatches, I think again, for storytelling purposes, I could, I, I mean, they definitely have the place. They fit within the pack, do you know what I mean? The theme is being sold. I just think some, some of the casual stuff is actually quite nice. There's also a onesie outfit, which is cute, but this is a stylistic choice, which is, as most things are for Create Sim, it's a stylistic choice. I thought it was quite short. I don't know, it just seemed a bit of an odd length. However, I did like the actual mesh of it and it also came with a cord swatch, which was really nice to see. Fucking love a cord swatch, feral for a cord swatch. But naturally there is some really chef themed outfits. I don't actually think I'll use these a lot, but they do come with some messy swatches too, which I liked. But I just think if you already have dine out and if you already have get to work, then there'll already be some type of these like businessy type of outfits. So yeah, I don't really see myself using them, but they are cute. But I mean, the showstopper for me, dun dun dun, Crocs, babe. We have Crocs, not the Shrek Crocs though. We do not have the Shrocks. But where there's a will, there's a way, guys. And I trust that some CC creators will go wild with this. For hairstyles as well, we've got the British chap. Lads, 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 lads. Show back in the sides, lads, lads. Which literally every single British man has this hairstyle. I saw that fade and I thought the Sims team clearly been playing with a Ouija board and resurrected the spirit of Queen Lizzie to make that hairstyle because British. And then we've got a cute little updo and some braids. One with the bandana. And then these hairstyles are spread across the ages too. They're not just locked to adults. But well, that's about as widespread as it gets. Like, I know that it's a stuff pack and I know that infants are the cool, cool new thing. I know that infants are the cool new thing. But why didn't toddlers get a matching outfit? This is one of those things where I get nervous on because I'm like, maybe it's just a me issue. Maybe I'm missing something and they actually do have one. But I don't think that they do. Infants, children and adults can have a matching outfit though and teenagers, I guess. None for you, Gretchen Wieners girl. Fuck them kids and fuck the toddlers too. And then for traits, we have no new traits either, which is honestly, it's a bit of a letdown, honestly, because I did expect some type of entrepreneurial trait. But no, no traits are to be seen. But there are two new aspirations for adults. So one focusing on like the actual cooking and baking side of it and one focusing on running a small business. So I guess that's where maybe my want for traits was coming. But these are both so focused solely on this pack. I remember one time English Simmer said something like, aspirations tend to just be a tutorial for whichever pack is out. And I really agree with that opinion because these are so hyper-focused to the specific pack that it ruins the potential of them a little bit. Does it really necessarily have to be making food? You know, if you're an entrepreneurial one, does it have to focus on selling pizza at this stand or could it just be selling anything? And then the replayability could just be, whoa! If it's open-ended, I just think it gives so much option for gameplay. Otherwise, you're just trapped. If you pick one of these options, then you've got to be making waffles. Can I please? Had a waffle anyway on a build and buy again it's a stuff pack so it's kind of limited it's it was quite difficult going through this because like oh this feels really limited but it is a stuff pack we do have new kitchen counters though which i'm really thankful to say because i'm always begging for new kitchen counters specifically modern ones because we do have a lot of old style kitchen counters and we have some modern ones as well but because the game has been out for so long, some of the modern ones start to look a little bit dated now. So I'm really happy that we've got these type of modern ones in. I think people will get a lot of use out of them. And then we also have wall shelves as well, which is a cool introduction, cool concept. And they're quite a new addition as well. I know we have the hanging pot rack, but nothing quite like this. And we've got the wall shelves that actually hang on the wall, but these hang from the ceiling. And then we do also have some decoration items as well that go with the vibe of the pack, but aren't usable, like the pizza making decoration, 
there's a measuring scale. I predicted that these would be usable just because of the placement of it on the actual counter, but it's not. And then we have some knives. There's also a pot drying station that goes on the wall, which I thought was a really cool concept because I do struggle to put things on the walls in the kitchen. I think it works in this context because you're going to have so many appliances that it kind of makes sense to have a decoration like that on the wall. I thought that was a really nice touch. And I do feel like there's a new team or something. I know that I saw a lot of European faces in the trailer and I can tell kind of that it's got a different team on this one because I feel like a lot of the objects are a kind of different vibe, like they're, they're trying different things. It's not quite the usual vibe. It's just an interesting change. And then we have the cookbook. I did see in the trailer when I watched the trailer that Oh, I hope that this is an actual usable cookbook. I think it would be so cool if you could just click that and just click cook. But I don't think that'll happen. It fucking happened, babe. I manifested it. I'm like genuinely so pleasantly surprised to say that it is usable. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not an entirely new gameplay thing. It, it just kind of works like a... It's almost like a referral. So you click it and then you click cook and then you can pick what you cook. But because it's just a small touch, it doesn't mean that it's a bad touch necessarily. I actually think that little details like this go a long way with the game. Because for me, I feel like The Sims 4 does a lot of little details, but the weighted on arbitrary stuff that you're not really going to feel the depth of the impact on your actual gameplay. I find that a lot of their animations are used for silly things like if your Sims cooking, oh my god, the eggs and you're falling out of the pan by harming a glute schnar. Oh no, it's back in the pan. Hee <laughs> hee. It doesn't actually impact how I'm playing with the game because it's just something that passes. Where so a small detail like this, it actually gives me another option to click. It gives me something else to do. I think little details that impact how you can interact with the game. Beautiful. Doesn't have to be massive, but I'm really glad that they included it. And then we have the new gameplay objects as well. Things that you can actually interact with. Gameplay objects. I'm so used to kids just being built by. We have the waffle maker, the pizza oven, the mixer, and the selling stand. Pizza and waffles kind of work like making any other type of food in the game. So you have your basic ones. And then as you level up your cooking skill, you can make more things. You can also take things from around the world and like add them in to reduce the cost of it. And they're really cool. I didn't know that chicken and waffles were a southern thing. I know I was shocked in the trailer because I took that to mean that you could come up with your own creations. You cannot. It's only food that already exists in game or food that came with this pack. Also the food mixer, I couldn't really understand at first because I was making dough on it. This is silly of me, I understand. And then I was trying to sell it on the selling station. I was like, okay, so I'm just selling door. What's the point of that? Is it a metaphor? Like, what is going on? Actually, I'm just a twat and I fail to realize that you can use this to make door, prepare meat, prepare veggies, prepare different types of stuff. And then you can use what you've prepared in the waffle maker, in the pizza oven. And it also brings the cost of making these items really far down which means that the revenue that you yield from these things when you actually do go on to sell them on the selling station, it shoots up, babe, because obviously you're not putting as much money in. I also think this is a great combo with packs like Cottage Living where you can be fully living off the land. I just thought that was a really, really cool way. But now onto the selling table and the actual appliances, which by the way, you can name the selling table. Naturally, I named mine Bitch. So in, if you see in any footage with Bitch is finished, it, it, I named the selling table Bitch, not my Sims. And you can also place appliances in your inventory now, including the wave scatter, the food annihilator, the omni waver, the schmapple micro, the lux drink tray, sugar cane popcorn popper, summer drink tray, sweet tooth ice cream machine, fountain of mirth, the gravy fountain, marv, number four stand, vintage glamour beverage fountain, blazing ladles, over the counter oven, no space electric oven, space saver. And we will talk more about those specific items that were already existing in the game a little bit later on. But for now, the ones that were included in the pack. Obviously, you can move your appliances now and as well as being able to move them and put them in your inventory, you can also put them on the selling table. There's different results for each though, which we will get into a little later. And the selling table itself can also be put in your inventory too. So this means as well as being able to sell things from the comfort of your own home, if you go to a community lot, you can sell stuff there. And I also tried to sell this in the Spice Festival that city live in. I could put it in a place that wasn't a dedicated community lot, like just a random part of the map. And it did work, but you couldn't put appliances on the selling table there and everything went back into your household inventory rather than your Sims one. So that is a bit of a limited thing there, but you still can do it. And then to start a sale, all you have to do is click on the table and select start sale and it creates a mini event. It's not gold, but it is timed. And then at the end of the event, you'll see how much money you made from each event as well. There's no limitations for how many events you can do, which I did really enjoy because sometimes it can be kind of difficult to make money on it. 
I really did enjoy the challenge though. And only one person can start the sale, but you can have another sim help out. Like it, it could be a full family affair. For example, I had one sim who was better at charisma start the sale and then talk to potential buyers and try and sell the products up. And then I had a sim that was better at cooking, be at the same table, but making the pizzas and making the waffles. So I was glad to see that two sims could use it at the same time. Kids can't use the appliances, but they can tend the table. So theoretically you could do a lemonade stand, but not really, which we will get into later. And then you can have it auto stock, but you can also choose to manually restock it. I did have some issues with both of this. Like it was quite difficult sometimes. But also, if you really want to micromanage it and really set up how these objects are displayed as well, you can just go straight into build buy and like click and put it on there rather than dragging it in the inventory, which gives you a lot of control over that. And then once the items are on the table, you can mark them up as well. So at default, I think it's just 0%, but you can mark them up up to a percentage of 300%. And I really like that it's up to a percentage because we saw what happened with Trendy when I listed an item for 9,999,999 simoleons and Mark McGoth was like, Slay, I've got that money for a chest. And I did really like Trendy, but I did think that was a limitation of it. One issue that I did have with this where I just wish they could have took it a little bit further is we can mark it up by 300%, but you can't mark it down. You can't put anything on a sale. There's no option for this. Theoretically, it's fine when you're out in the middle of a sale, you're going to want to hike the prices up. But where I found that I could have really needed this was towards the end of a sale or towards the end of a day where I still had a good couple of items left or they were going to spoil soon or something like that. And I couldn't really justify starting another sale just to sell these items. It would have been really cool just to put all of those items on a sale so I could just bosh, 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 get rid of them really quick. So in terms of gameplay, I did feel like that potential bit was lacking. And speaking, you know, of having perishable items as sellable things, they do perish, darling. They do spoil. And I found that this was a difficulty as well because there's not just a button that you can click on the table, like you can click on a fridge and click clean out spoiled items. There's no real way to do that. So you're kind of having to drag and drop it all the way over to a different side of the, the build where that has a bin. Or what I was doing was just kind of dragging them off the table. So there was no real way to do that. And then you couldn't also sell them within your inventory. I found that quite difficult. But... One thing that I did enjoy about that is that you could potentially sell spoiled things to random sims. And I'm just thinking about all the avenues for chaos for that. And I think that's beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Like, I do think that I will 100% do a video just trying to sell fully spoiled things. I, I just want to poison the community. I really do. I just think that is my goal. And another great feature that I found as well was that it doesn't just have to be the items that are included in this pack. The aspirations are focused around the items that are included in this pack. But the actual stuff that you can sell isn't. I tried loads of different things to try and sell on the tables. I was selling mac and cheese popcorn popcorn was a fucking hoot guys let me tell you nectar which fantastic because nectar still is not included in clubs juice shitloads of stuff i think the selling table is a great addition to the game and i really like that you can use different things on it for the most part it definitely does have some limitations one of the biggest limitations i encountered straight off the bat was that these are at the end of the day cooking appliances and as appliances i want to do in the sims franchise they can catch fire, which, hey, babe, literally, I'm experienced at this, you know what I mean? I have dabbled in a fire or two. But no, this is the ultimate fire. She cannot be beat. There's a rooting issue with the selling table. Your sim's just fully, there's no way to get to it. If you try to click extinguish, they're like, uh, babe, literally, where are you trying to point to me right now? Because I literally don't know where you're pointing to me. So when a fire starts, they just fully can't reach it, but they're just still start freaking out. But that's why we have firefighters in the game, so that's okay. It's crickets in here. I said, that's why we have firefighters in the game, so everything is okay. Mute button, everybody's mouth is zip shut. No, like, honestly, you're fucked, babe. You literally just have to sit and wait until the fire stops. Even the firefighters, like, and then once it's finished, they just go, nobody wants to get up and fucking work anymore. Another issue is that, again, once again, these are appliances. And if you have seasons installed, then it is likely to rain because every single season has rain. So because of that, when it rains, the appliances break and you have to repair them every single time. So you can either find a place to sell your items in shelter, indoors, or you're out of business for most of the year. And I mean, I guess it makes sense. They are electronics, but also uh, I wish there was a type of cover over the actual selling table because there is over the front part of it, but not at the back bit where the actual appliances are. I just wish it did have that kind of shelter that overrode the rain. I also did have random sims come up and use my pizza machine when I was literally mid-shift without my permission like have some fucking respect so i do feel like that's a potential issue that you might encounter as well it was kind of annoying and the waffle maker my love my superhero i did encounter some glitches with it as well she was a little bit glitchy at times sometimes it just wouldn't finish cooking and i couldn't interact with it at all because if i tried to interact with it but like you can't interact with it while it's cooking so i was like well do you know what 
I was making in chicken wa chicken and waffles this time. I'm sure chicken and waffles do take a little bit extra time to cook than just a waffle. It's chicken, you know. Got to make sure it's not pink. After 24 hours, I was like, just don't feel like this is a realistic time. So I had to delete the entire waffle maker and then buy a new one. Not necessarily glitches in the game, but some things that were overlooked. I tried to mess about with the other appliances, like I said, and I'll be getting into that. And now they are draggable. You can drag them onto the thing. The summer drink tray, the hot pot, the fountain of mirth. People did buy the summer drink tray and the hot pot. Brilliant. We can now sell lemonade. But actually it was kind of a limitation on this because they didn't just buy one serving of the summer drink or one serving from the hot pot. They bought the entire thing. It went at a good price. But these appliances are fucking costly. Do you know what I mean? You technically can use this to have kids sell lemonade. But I don't necessarily think it would be worth it. Popcorn does work perfectly though. Almost too perfectly. Because my sims were fucking feral for popcorn. And I'm really glad that you can sell wine and juice on this. I really am. Portions wouldn't work though. Which makes me sad. I wanted to poison my sims. And then all of this goes in the entrepreneurial skill. Which isn't a new skill in the game. But honestly I'm quite glad that it's not a new skill in the game. Because we have so many different skills. And I do think that they should kind of homogenize together. So I'm glad that it is the same skill rather than a separate one. All in all, I would say I definitely did have fun, Your Honor. I really did. I'd say Create Sim was probably the weakest aspect of the pack. Because there were some aspects I liked about it. But it definitely, it's not going to change my gameplay without it. But the selling table honestly was a great addition for me. I had so much fun with it. But again, it's something that's not necessarily new to game. Because we do already have selling tables we do already have the interaction of being able to sell things and it comes with its own limitations of people coming up and using it while you're working or not working in the rain but honestly really at the heart of it i had a lot of fucking fun i think it could be good for play styles like if you're into rags or riches or family gameplay an entrepreneurial style gameplay you know it's definitely got that replayability aspect and i like that it wasn't just locked to the features of this one specific pack too i hope that the glitches are fixed before release too so I know that sometimes they are, but I like to still say the experiences that I had with the pack because I'm playing with this a day before release. So like, you know, I'm just glad stuff packs are back. And that would have been a very controversial take in 2019. Stuff packs were the devil, darling. And I think the thing that I'm most excited about for stuff packs being back is just the gameplay aspect of it as well. I think it, we've definitely been needing more gameplay objects. It's okay to not have the same opinion as me. This might, you might be looking at this pack thinking, I'm not fucking paying that money for waffles. And that's okay. I love y'all so, so much. I'm also streaming on Twitch again. If you want to go follow me on there, twitch.tv forward slash Plumbella. I love y'all so, so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, bitch. Bye.